But we are, yes, we just we just went live. Hello, everyone. Um, this is Keith Stone with the Center for Hellenic Studies. Um, this is another Cosmos online open house. And we are very fortunate today to have with us Eleni Paleologu. Um, and I'll give a short introduction of you before I turn to you. Um, you're a graduate of Athens University, a postgraduate degree holder of Bedford College, London, uh, an honorary, you have been an honorary research fellow at University College, London, and you have spent time, um, three decades and more, with the archaeological service of the Greek Ministry of Culture. You have organized, um, directed excavations, including rescue excavations, which I might ask a question about later because that sounds exciting. You have worked in antiquities, protection, organized museum exhibits, used new technologies as they emerge, done committee work as part of archaeological councils, and of special note, you have worked on the proposal for the site of Mycenae to be included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Now, retired, you continue to conduct research and communicate your findings, and you have special expertise in today's topic, which is late Bronze Age burials at Mycenae and what they tell us. Welcome, this is Paleologo. Now, before I, I let you go with your presentation, I would like to ask you the question that I often ask our first time guests, which is what, what first inspired your interest in things archeological? Is there a particular moment that you can tell us about? Uh, I was born here in Peloponnese, Corinthia. And when I was a child, I came to my scene with my father. I was guided there and I was excited. I could not imagine that in the future I would work here. But uh, this was a dream for me, a great happiness, that, which was, uh, that it was fulfilled in the future. And uh, I'm very happy for this. It is one, feel, one dream fulfilled. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. Okay. All right. We are going to speak about burials at Mycenae. Burials is an important issue for this district. We know that uh, since the early stages of human existence, not only of course at Mycenae, the death of a member of the community was a reason of grief for the loss of an active and useful individual. At the same time, beside the sad feelings, they had to get rid of the corpse in order to avoid health problems. One effective method was the burial of the disease under the earth's surface. Coming to the early second millennium at Mycenae, as is where in mainland Greece, the simply organized society used to bury their deceased members in pits or in cyst graves. They were small in size, accepted the contracted body, and were easily constructed with pebbles, stone plaques, and clay within some hours after the death. They are, it is possible to have the picture, the first picture, please, please. Yes, the first and this. You see here the, the body is contracted in uh, one small tomb, and very easily constructed, I uh, guess. They are close to the settlement, but apart from the habitation, and they constituted the so-called prehistoric cemetery of Mycenae. The offerings were, when they existed, uh, mostly ceramics, a drinking cup, and a power vessel, a jug. Uh, through their hum humble appearance, they tell us a lot about the rituals, the beliefs of the people, and their socioeconomic situation. A sudden change occurs towards elaboration of the monumentality of the burials after 1700 BC that tell us much more, but it also poses difficult questions. Next slide, please. Next picture. Next, this is another, this is, uh, you, you can see two circles there, the grave circles, which we are going to describe. Two groups of graves uh, are separated by circular enclosures, 
to mark what we call today grave circle A and B. The graves themselves are mainly deep rectangular shafts in the earth leading to a subterranean burial chamber with built walls around and covered by a roof of wood beams and stone slabs. The chamber has accepted more than one burial and uh, a great quantity of rich offerings, most of them imported. Next, please. Their materials are precious metals as gold, silver and bronze, semi-precious stones for the jewelry and the vessels, everything a special work of art, many of them manufactured in uh, purpose to be deposit deposited in the grave. The faces of some individuals are covered with a mask of gold foil, cut and adapted in situ. Ceremonial weapons, possibly made for uh, funeral use, are also deposited in quantities and they betray a martial society at its formation. On the top of the filling of the shaft graves, 12, uh, 20 stone slabs are erected as markers. 11 of them bear sculpted uh, low-relief depictions of hunting or chariot races and other decorative elements. The accumulation of wealth is evident and scholars try to analyze object by object and every detail of the funeral construction in order to extract answers. The first echo from these burials is that the society gets more complex. People develop interest beyond their own home and place, and the competition is developed to achieve power and authority over the community and the position in the worldwide system. The revealing of these treasures has been the beginning of the Mycenaean archaeology, when in 1876 Heinrich Schliemann excavated the grave circle A inside the Acropolis of Mycenae. He said with excitement, I touched the face of Agamemnon and he felt justified because he insisted following Posanias reference about the position of uh, Agamemnon and his consort's graves inside the fortification walls. The confirmation of this information is astonishing because Posanias would not have seen the graves. Their monumentality was visible during the burials and the excavation and not at the, the interval times. It seems that there was a very strong and long tradition uh, among the local peasants who guided him and told that the most famous Mycenaean and hero was buried there. Nowadays, we cannot know, of course, the names of, the, of those founders of the Mycenaean state and civilization, whom the tradition identified with Homeric heroes. It is a fact that the enclosed area of Great Circle A was never disturbed by later buildings, and it seems that it served as an abode for the heroic cult. This is verified by the early 5th century shared. Next, please. Bearing the inscription, Toiro Semi, I belong to the hero, and uh, the bronze statue of an athlete found at the upper excavation levels of the grave circle A. Uh, next, please. The grave circle B enclosed by well-built rubble wall stands, stands at a distance from the later built fortification wall. In the picture we don't see the fortification because at uh, the time of, uh, at this time it not existed. Uh, encloses more tombs than the other grave circle. Uh, 14 sharp graves the grave circle B, uh, six graves, the grave circle A. 
with very rich offerings, although less in quantity compared to the other circle. The prominent position of the common in the common cemetery, in the prehistoric cemetery, and the display of wealth begins chronologically first at circle B, and it continues and supersedes it at circle A. The competition was strong, while the external contacts had an important role to prove the ability of the new ascending ruling class, the new elite, we could say. Exotic objects coming from Near East, Egypt, and especially the already developed nearby Minoan Crete, attributes prestige to the newly faced societal groups. During the funeral ceremony, the deceased is seen adorned with rich jewelry, shining weapons, expensive textiles for the shroud or clothing, various precious offerings, a stone, metal, and ceramic vases, things that, the, that at the same time uh, advertise the social position of the contributor are carried by processions of uh, mourners, relatives and friends, and deposited inside the grave. At Grave Circle B, remnants of funeral meals have been noticed through the appearance of animal bones and ceremonial broken vases. Before the final ceremony of the interment, the grave had been uh, dug. Its size demanded the effort of a team of workers during many days because they had to dig and shape the shaft and build the side walls of the burial chamber. The relief stone markers had to be sculptured and set on immediately or soon after the burial. We notice a lot of activity around these funerals and it is difficult to estimate the time that one ceremony would require. Certainly, in most cases, uh, the time needed was shorter, a little shorter, of course, because they had just to reopen and reuse the family tomb. The family relations look stronger at this period compared to the earlier times when a grave was for one individual. There is no detected analogous amount of activity related to religion, the cult of the gods. It is apparent that uh, the honoring of the outstanding ancestors, contributors to the construction of the Mycenaean state, was a priority for the community. Later, at late Atlantic, we call it uh, late Atlantic one and two. During the uh, 15th century BC, the Mycenaean state gets more stabilized and uh, the society looked for more impressive monumentality. So new sophisticated tombs were adopted at Mycenae, at first at the same time with the shaft graves and later exclusively. The new types of tombs are destined to shelter the deceased members of a family in a broader and dependent burial chamber. Uh, next, please. Uh, the burial chamber is broader now, accessible horizontally, um, and not vertically as it happened at the shaft graves. They present a tighter family display based to a group identity since they were situated inside organized cemeteries. A simpler type is the chamber tomb. The simpler type of the, this is the chamber tomb, as you see it here. Uh, a chamber carved out in the, bed, in the bedrock of a slope a built entranceway approach through a corridor. The chamber tombs appear in various size, uh, shape. They are rectangular, circular, and irregular. They were usually simple and decorated 
or with plastered facades. They might have niches, pits, benches, side chambers. They were usually used for more than one generation, and their occupants belonged to a middle and upper class. The offerings are various in quantities and material, depending to different factors. Ceramic offerings are predominant. Uh, it is uh, the Mycenaean uh, pottery is famous at this, uh, in all the world of their time, uh, this uh, period. And it is a luxury product anyway. Uh, they are painted or decorated. Their shapes look selected for funeral use, although the whole repertory is represented. Many terracotta, human and animal figurines of the characteristic Mycenaean types accompany burials as well as uh, clay models of furniture. A similar, a similar shape, more elaborated. Next, please. Uh, is observed to the built tholos tombs, having a circular behind shape of the burial space, an entranceway and the dromos, the corridor in front of the tomb. The old uh, layout is similar to chamber tombs, but it is built, it is an elaborated uh, form of this, uh, of the chamber tomb. Their built form stimulates the builders to experiment and advance their methods in selected materials. The walls are first built in a rubble masonry with a care to achieve a nice appearance. Later, they prefer the well-ordered Ashler masonry and adopted my known technique, which finds its perfect expression at the Atreus Treasury and Clitemistra's uh, Tholos tomb. Next, please. This is uh, Atreus Treasury, it is also here. The material of the first Tholos tombs was local limestone. Later, they covered parts of the facets with porous stone, a nicer and easily cut material. In the advanced 14th century, they learned to cut the local conglomerate limestone uh, to, in big plinths, which they use for ashlar walls or for fresh uh, uh, holes and lintels. The perfect re result of this technical knowledge is the treasury of Atreus, where every part was built in ashlar masonry with a beautiful conglomerate stone and a huge lintel of 113 tons that was put over the entrance. You see it here. Once in the advanced 14th century, we see, and stayed there forever under the relieving tri triangle. The conglomerate is the prestigious material of the Mycenaean architecture everywhere as the pentelic marble for the 5th century Athens. The most splendid paradigm of uh, the Mycenaean architecture, beside the defensive walls, are the thorough stones, built for the sake of, of burials. Neither domestic not, uh, nor religious buildings could be compared to these funeral constructions emblematic for the Mycenaean civilization. They are the proper burial uh, monuments for the social groups whose ancestors have used the grave circles. Ancestors or previous elite, we don't know. There is evidence for contemporaneous ceremonies uh, and the later Iron Age heroic cult at these tombs, which means that a memory of the past existed. This collective memory was fed by tradition and literature during the Iron Age, as well as uh, the recognition of identity through a glorious ancestorship. 
coming back to the palatial Mycenaean prosperity and the peak of their power at the 13th century, is it possible to have the fifth uh, uh, picture, please? The picture number of, not this, the previous, one the previous, the number um, five. If it is possible, if it is difficult, so please. Uh, before this. Not this, the other one. Oh, yes, it's okay, okay. No, the other, uh, this which you had. Okay. Uh, the authorities of the state decide to extend the citadel and to include the grave circle A inside the fortification wall. As a consequence, they also decide to refurbish the circle and rebuild its enclosure to a higher necessary level. The new enclosure, this is the new enclosure of the 13th century and not the enclosure of the 16th century, uh, of the, ti the time of the shaft graves. But this is later. It is the renovation of the, of the circle. Um, the new enclosure is made of slab stones of a rare luxury shelly porous stone. Uh, this special porous stone, with shells included, was carried at Perahora, at the a site near Mycenae, near, uh, but far enough for this time. They were carried to Mycenae Road, 60 kilometers to the north, from the north, and maybe partially by sea. Newer filling was added so that the floor of the circle would come to a higher level and the, the sculptured marker still were repositioned. Although without exact relation to the position of the graves as we know them nowadays. The area functioned as a sacred place. It was never disturbed by any building activities and a heroic cult was certainly identified there in the early 5th century BC. Posanias was said and informed us that this was the place of Agamemnon's tomb. It is evident that the buried founders of the Mycenaean glorious days were highly respected and venerated not only during but also after the and after the burial, but also for centuries during the late Bronze Age and the whole historical period. Posanias also wrote that he visited Egistus and Clitennistra's tombs out of the citadel walls, uh, because as criminals they were not allowed to be buried inside the walls. We know that he does not mean the tallest tombs called after the mythical names today, which were considered treasuries at the time of Pafsanias and not tombs. It has been supposed that he was shown some remnants of grave circle B, where some markers would look as signs of tombs, and the imagination of the peasants would attribute eponymous occupants to them. But what happened with burials after the collapse of the Mycenaean palatial system uh, after 1200 BC, uh, after the great destruction of, of Mycenae? We noticed that the older chamber tombs continued to be used or are reused after an interval, giving evidence of a nostalgic attachment to the past at this uh, transitional turmoil period. The interval of the use of chamber tombs in the late 13th century BC is noticed through the lack of offerings. This phenomenon of the lack of interest in part of the living to offer to the dead is owed to the fact that they were concerned to spend wealth and labor for the works of public substruction. Secondly, Pit and cyst graves were established over the ruins of the monuments of the monumental buildings of the past. A sentimental uh, return to it or a claim of property and lineage. 
The markers indicating the position of the tombs are either big craters, as the warrior's face, the warrior's crater. Uh, would you please go to, to the other picture later? Next, next. 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 This. Uh, or this was put over a grave as uh, a marker, or bronze tripods, vessels associated to funerary meals. Third, in the middle, next piece, of the, in the middle of the 12th century BC, a stone tumulus with built circular enclosure was constructed in the plain. Uh, three and a half kilometers southwest of the Acropolis at the site Hania. It gave space to nine urns of cremated human bones. The cremation of the dead is a new burial custom, as it happens with the burials in the stone fillings of the tumulus, while the rest features are local Mycenaean. There is no palatial control at this period, so the transformed and steady political situation let open uh, chances for other expressions. Is the way that we explain this change here. Anyway, the families of the deceased might claim the exploitation of the resources of the plain, since the small nearby settlement of the 13th century had been destroyed about two generations before. The monument was visible much later in the third century AD when Pausanias uncounted it and wrote that it was the tomb of Thiestes, the brother of Atreus and his competitor for the throne of Mycenae, father of Aegisthus, the slayer of Agamemnon. He says that the site was called the Kree, Rams, and this identified to modern Hania. Uh, no monument would stand at Mycenae and not be related by the popular imagination to a famous person of their mythology. This is only a quick examination from one point of view of the barriers of Mycenae. It gives a, a general framework of the socio-political circumstances and the evolution of the evolution, the peak and the decline of my senior state. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me see if I can. Okay. Thank you. Um, now's the time for questions. I have a few, but I will defer to those who are here. Astrid, please, go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. I would like to, I would like to ask you a little bit more about those so-called Clanmenestra and Aegisto's tomb close to the circle B. B, are you able to still trace them or is there any, you know, backgrounds to the mytholo mythological, you know, beings that's supposed to be buried in, th in that tomb? And uh, second, if I may, another question. Could you elaborate a little bit of, uh, if you have found any trace about Ithaca, uh, about archaeological, you know, um, archaeological site to, who might, which might point, to, might point to Ithaca? Thank you. Uh, you mean uh, something that from, from a senior point into Ithaca? I don't think that we have something there to to give any hint about connections with Ithaca. I think that Mycenae was the capital place and uh, all, all around the, uh, every, every part of uh, Peloponnesus of the lower mainland belonged to, um, to, to the control of, Pel of uh, Mycenae, uh, possibly Ithaca too. And uh, as we know from Homer, uh, Agamemnon was uh, the general, the chief general of uh, the expedition to Troy. And he were, it was the more important place. 
Of course, uh, Ithaca was an important site, but not equal to Mycenae. Uh, about the, the tombs, you mean the tombs of Aegisthus uh, um, and Clitemnistra that we call today as the name with this under these names? No, I think <laughs> um, it is impossible for them to be the tombs of Aegisthus and Clitemnistra because the tomb of Aegisthus is uh, really early. It is it is um, one century and more earlier than uh, the tomb of Clitemnistra. That would be impossible. And uh, the other thing is that um, it is because of Pafsanias that they are called like this, because he said that, uh, that these tombs of uh, the two criminals uh, are out of the walls. But uh, Pafsanias did not mean the Tholos tombs. The Tholos tombs were considered treasuries by Pafsanias and uh, his age. Uh, he meant he had seen something different. Of course, what Pafsanias says has a great, is at a great distance from the Mycenaean period. The, uh, we cannot trust everything he says. He has, uh, he transmits all the tradition of uh, the, his time. Another. Oh, yes, and uh, I want to say something more. We think, I think, I am convinced that Pafsanias has seen some tombs, uh, that this, the simple type of tombs at the uh, grave circle B. He saw something there. There was a tradition that there were tombs. And he's, uh, this is confused with, um, if these are ancient tombs, these belong to uh, to Aegisthus uh, and Clitemnistra for the imagination, for the tradition, for the people, for the memory of the people who 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 know my singing. But all this is a confusion. Another question. I have yeah, yes. Um, so uh, I think you indicated, and I've read that. Uh, My Mycenaean civilization fell about 1200 BC. Uh, if that's the case, um, what was what was the situation at Mycenae or Mycenae uh, in the late Helladic 3C between 1200 and 1100? Why is that uh, period called Mycenaean if the civilization had already fallen? Uh, the political system had fallen, the palatial system had fallen, uh, the people were there, the tradition was Mycenaean, and uh, the roots of this tradition were, it was a, transi a, a transitional period. The art had Mycenaean characteristics. Uh, they used the chamber tombs. Uh, what we know about the political system of this period, what we try to understand is that there was va not Vanax, there was not the Lanier B, they did not, uh, I don't know if they, forgot, for, they had forgotten how to write, but this means that the, there was a lack of administration at this period. Everything had gone, but um, we think we, understand that uh, from the linear B again, that Vanax was the great king, but it, we, it is a word that it is preserved in Greek, and we say Anax means king. Time, uh, Vasilevs means king, and in linear B, Vasilevs is something like a minister. It is an important person of the administration. And after this, Vasilevs in the Iron Age is the, the king. It means that the authority goes from Mavanax, who has disappeared, to Vasilevs. And uh, possibly we have um, a political system uh, which uh, has an, the, uh, which is um, uh, conducted by uh, ministers, by Vasilis, by kings. 
of this type. We have not the other, the palatial system of one person. Possibly we have more uh, people of uh, the elite of Mycenae, of the people who knew administration, who knew how to trade, um, to, um, uh, to have communications with other places. That's why in the 12th century, there is, um, we have an interval in, um, uh, in, in uh, the decline. We have, again, a very good production of pottery, very nice pottery. And this is very much uh, recognized uh, because it is uh, found uh, in the Mediterranean, again, in some places. Uh, at the East Mediterranean. It means that my city tried to find its place again under another political system. It is my senior. But after this, after the, uh, the advanced 11th century, the characteristics are different. We have not my senior characteristics. Everything changes. Very interesting. Thank you so much. It is very interesting uh, to find this not uh, not only through the the excavations, but also through the language, through the the terms banax and basilefs. Uh, these both words in Greek, in New Greek, mean kings, but it is another king, banax. Banax is the great king of Mycenae. Yes, thank you. That's fantastic. Um, thank you. Uh, Go ahead, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, could I ask a little bit more about the, the Tholos tombs? Um, yes. uh, we visit uh, the um, treasury of, of Atreus, it's called. And I wonder if they were uh, used as for burials. So why did they become known as treasuries? Or were they used for both? Uh, <laughs> they <clears throat> they were for burials, but they were they had very rich offerings, and in Hellenistic time we suspect that people went inside these tombs, these chamber tombs, these chambers, and they found all this. They looted all this material, and they thought that that could not be for burial. This was the treasury, and. In this way, the tradition of treasuries was created. And Pafsanias repeats this. Um, I, they, when they went inside, they did not excavate. They just took, took everything that was uh, kept there. Most all the, the, the whole tombs were found plundered. It is uh, a pity that they were plundered from the Hellenistic period to uh, uh, till the 19th century, the last Tholos tomb that was plundered was the tomb of Clitemnistra, the Tholos tomb, which was plundered by Veli uh, Pasha from uh, Tripolis. It was 10 years before uh, the creation of the um, uh, uh, free Greek, Greek state. And he, he, they found there all these rich things, and they say that they, were, they had a lot of gold, which went to Tripolis, and uh, there it was melted, because they wanted the material, not the works of art, the works of art that were there. We were unlucky about this. Let's hope that we will find another, but we cannot find another uh, Treves treasury in the future. Yes, yes, there'll be so much information, as you say, works of art, but also information that tells us more about the society and the values, of the people making the offerings or the, making the burial rituals. So, yes, thank you. We have a question from someone watching on YouTube. Um, first, th um, thanking you for the presentation, but also asking um, to know more about the warrior's um, crater that you showed us. What more can you tell us about that? You mean the warriors of the shaft graves? I think so. Uh, or the, the warriors of the vase. <laughs> um, 
They are I, similar. I think it's about the next to the last slide. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, you mean the, the warriors of the uh, crater? Um, we we notice warrior graves at the beginning of the um, of the creation of the Mycenaean state. It happens that uh, state at the beginning uh, society looks more martial because they want to 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 uh, advertise their ability to. To, to be there, but at the end, when we have this trend, this is of the 12th century, this space. It is after the collapse of the Mycenaean civilization. At this period, there are dangers. They have to know how to fight. They have to know how to go to the war. They go to the war and the woman behind, you see, uh, is greeting them, she says goodbye of the soldiers, and uh, it is a period of unrest, and uh, the, they have to go to war. It is the, the symptoms of the, period, the transition of the periods, of the periods of decline. That's why we have this uh, preference for such depiction of this type at uh, the beginning when they start to form, to establish their state at, at the end when they have a decline. In the meantime, there are weapons, but uh, it is there is not so much emphasis. There are weapons, some weapons in the uh, tombs, and we are very lucky to find them because it is very rare uh, find. Uh, there is not emphasis to the war at the time of the prosperity and the, the power of the Mycenae. This would happen in every state, I think. Thank you. Who else has a question? Well, I have one, and it's about the positioning of the bodies within the burial. You showed us this slide early on where it looked like the legs were drawn up a little bit, the knees were bent. Um, I guess I have two questions. One is, does this arrangement of the body continue into the later types of tombs that you talked about, the chamber tombs, the fellows tomb? And second, um, why didn't they make the graves long enough? Why didn't, you know, was there some significance to uh, compressing the body rather than lying it out straight. They they do it only at the beginning, uh, before the Mycenaean. Uh, um, um, it is almost a mid-Helladic custom to have this position. Later in Mycenaean period, the bodies are stretched. It is difficult. We have to find out the psychology of the people, why they did this. There was space all the time, enough space. Possibly it, it, it demanded an effort in part of the living to, to have the body in this uh, position. They should uh, um, uh, uh, contract it. But uh, later, there is no problem. The, the bodies are stretched inside the, the tombs. And we have also it again in geometric period, in later, in the Iron Age, that they contract the bodies. It is something that it is difficult to answer only from the excavation. You, you, you have to look for many factors for this. I don't want to say something that would be not accurate. And they say that, uh, of course, one supposition is that this is the position of uh, the um, body in the, um, of the baby inside the, the woman, inside the womb. And uh, that is yeah, because the, uh, the man goes back to the earth and the earth is the great mother, they, it is in this position. But we are not said from somebody from the, from the antiquity that they had this in mind. It is a supposition. It is a, something that we think. Right, thank you. 
There's a question from someone watching on YouTube, which is, is the area fully excavated there at Mycenae? Are there plans for further excavation, if not? Uh, it is, uh, the, at Mycenae, which is uh, the long history of excavation, the longest history, uh, there is, uh, the, the, there is a lot of work to be done, even inside the Acropolis. The Acropolis is not inside the walls. It is not fully excavated, but we always need first to um, uh, study the material, to know what we don't know, what we know, what we have to look for. That's why we don't, we cannot excavate quickly. <coughs> Uh, this was the mistake that uh, the archaeologists did at the beginning. They began excavate quickly things. But this is not right. We have time and uh, the excavation is a uh, difficult work and uh, a great responsibility because when you excavate, you destroy evidence. And this evidence is more important. Nowadays, we have uh, we, are, uh, we have the assistance of uh, uh, the contribution of many sides, and we know we learn things that people in the past could not know. It is very important to know the bones, the bones, the human bones, the age of the people, uh, the diseases, the animal bones, the type of uh, the the kind of animals that we have. All these are. Uh, things that uh, give a lot of information. And of course, we preserve the bones, but in the first years of excavations, some bones, not the bones of the sharp graves, but uh, some animal bones and others could, uh, were not preserved. But if there is work for many generations, it may seem, Thank you. There's another question from out there, which is, did all of the graves um, start outside the walls or were some um, some burials performed inside the city walls to begin with? If you mean in general, uh, in the historical times, the cemeteries were outside the walls, but uh, it depends. We find in all this, if we, we speak only about my scene, there are, a lot of, there are a lot of burials inside the walls, but the walls were built later than the cemeteries were there. And when the cemeteries were given up, they, uh, they, used, the, they used the space for other, uh, the space had other uh, use. And um, for example, it may seem we have Besides the shaft graves of the grave circle A, there are many tombs around under the Mycenaean houses, uh, many tombs of earlier periods. But as I told you, even in later periods, we have, after the destruction of uh, Mycenae, uh, they went and they built tombs over the ruins. It was something very important to do this because uh, the ruins were, they venerated in this way the ruins and it was an act, uh, um, not only an act of uh, respect, but also it meant that here uh, these ruins belong to us because here we have the tomb of our ancestors. It was important for the living people, of course. It was uh, a legal action. But uh, generally, burials were thought, as I told you at the beginning, that it should be away from uh, uh, the habitation because it was uh, important for the health. After this, they had other ways to face it. Thank you. I see some people have joined us, perhaps. Um, a question from one of you. I have another question in reserve, if not. 
I don't know if all of you have come to Greece to visit my scene. I, Mm -hmm. Many of us have, we see a lot of nodding. I recognize most faces, <laughs> yes. But uh, I think that my singing um, is um, uh, never ends. You can see all more and more things when you visit it. And uh, it, uh, one day is never enough. And uh, you see more when you come again. I have a question about um, what I want to say. I think that the burials that you showed us were probably burials of elite people. Um, what were more ordinary burials like at the time? Do we have any evidence, or were they just not yes. well enough to survive? The shaft, the grave cirques are uh, uh, burials of the elite people, really. But it depends on the period and the prosperity of the people. You see that during the uh, Mycenaean period, the, the palatial Mycenaean period, the period of prosperity, uh, ordinary people are buried in uh, chamber tombs, while the leading class is buried in follows tombs. And uh, uh, the chamber tombs are not simple tombs. It is that it, uh, they demanded work, they demanded to have the ability to do this, to have uh, the wealth and, the, and uh, to pay for this, to do this. And it depends if the people are uh, prosperous, they do this. If they, they are not, they, at the beginning we saw that they dig simple graves, but even the simple grave has different one from the other. If uh, uh, the proprietor the living people are um, can offer something more, they do it. I remember a worker who used to say, oh, this man here had very good children. They had not what to offer him, that they have built a good tomb. <laughs> uh, a small tomb, but a good tomb. There's a question about the relationship between the funeral markers um, and the number of burials found in grave circles A and B. Are the markers, um, are there just as many markers as graves or were there some that were unmarked perhaps or some that had more than one marker? It's a very good question because um, we should have, as we know from grave circle B, uh, so many markers as uh, uh, graves, but in circle A we have much more. It, uh, I think that the people when they um, renovated the circle uh, A, uh, they collected all the nice slabs, all the nice markers, they put it there without thinking where is, and they did not know where is the tomb. They put their uh, markers and they said there are tombs underneath. And uh, they did not mind if there were, if the markers were more than the tombs. Of course, it is possible that uh, after a burial they would uh, erect a special marker for somebody very special. Although, if there was a marker at the tomb, if um, uh, he was uh, an important person, they would they could uh, establish a new marker over the grave, close to the other marker, they would not mind. It is uh, something that we cannot find what happened. But this is noticed that grave A we have, where we have mostly, where we have the renovation. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Just a quick follow-up question to that. So, I mean, that sounds so interesting in the sense that, it, like, we think about grave markers as being a very individualized, like a, almost a replacement for an identity or a, or a continuation of an identity. Um, this would set up a very different kind of relationship between those markers and the individuals. So I guess it's uh, not so much a question, it's a comment, I suppose. 
we try to find out what happens. We, it is a matter of research, this, but it is. it looks that uh, there was a relation between the man who was inside the tomb and the, the marker. Uh, of course, we, there is a lot of work done for the circuits, especially the circ A. But now, um, my colleagues from the National Museum are studying again from the beginning all the objects of every uh, wow. grave and uh, everything, and they try to find all these to, to answer to all these questions. But of course, everything is not answered because now we know better about more things about the bones and we know if this is where we want to be sure that this is a who he's a man or she's a woman and what happens and what are the offerings to everybody and all this and what is the time that all these were offered and then we they relate this to the markers it is something that uh, we are going to have soon uh, answers. That's exciting. It, Thank you so much. We're so lucky people are doing that. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Any last questions? Our hour is about up. I don't want to miss any. No? Well then. All that remains is to thank our guest, Mrs. Paleologu. Thank you so much for joining us. This was fascinating and an inexhaustible topic, as you pointed out earlier. Um, and thank you all for coming. See you next time. Thank you very much.